This is Frontline on Air. Major stories on the go. Farewell a Papan. Tall and seasoned, my grandfather had encountered seven witches, two giant trolls and countless imps and chatans in his lifetime. Jinoy Joe Spee. It rained in Kombodinyamakal the day my grandfather Palak Tingal Devasi Ausef passed away. It was in July 1996 and the world seemed indifferent to the departure of an old man. A papan as I fondly called him had stomach cancer. But he departed oblivious to the stealthy invasion of mischievous cells conquering every inch of his insides. No one had the heart to inform him about the nature of his ailment and that his days were numbered. With seven children, five sons and two daughters and a decent gathering of grandchildren, the collective decision was to let the old man part in peace, clinging to hope. Can one depart with hope? I did not comprehend it then. I felt that in that final moment with the realization that one is leaving behind everything one loves, all forms of hope should cease to flutter and one should succumb to the inevitable in disgrace. I was a mere 13 and each visit to the hospital fueled my desire to tell him the harsh truth about his imminent demise. However, the radiant hope in his eyes restrained me. I'm going to jump out of this bed and start running in just a week, Karave. He consoled me one somber evening. I could not meet his weary yet shining eyes and his pallid, wrinkled cheeks. Wrinkles, the uniform of the dying, adorned him abundantly. His skin at times retreated into itself and occasionally expanded unwittingly, forming disorderly patterns, especially on his neck and cheeks. Even young people in the village wore wrinkles on their bodies before their demise. I had seen this myself. Yes, not everyone experiences a tangible death. Some die within and are buried decades later, like my uncle Kunyavari the Papan. He bid farewell to this world the day he lost his job at an arak shop when a Congress government banned the sale of the humble brew. Losing nearly all his money, he became a curse that missed its target. Your Papan died that very day, Trakadave. roughly meaning right my dear he told me later what is left now is the burial some years later cirrhosis of the liver claimed him but appan was not a loser like his son he was a survivor he exuded the aura of a been there done that hero tall and seasoned he had encountered seven witches two giant trolls countless imps and chatans in his lifetime although he seldom visited us his tales of confronting evil filled our small house which was just a stone's throw from a towering people tree that every night assumed the shape of eerie creatures to him evil was not entirely malevolent it was a form of karmic retribution we all have to compensate for our mistakes These fellows do that a few births later he reasoned I bought into that logic night crawling was merely a return on their investment will you become a giant troll once you're dead i asked him once shish never never he shrugged it off i am not a sinner i am just having fun with life and jesus knows that very well he had so much fun with his life a lamb on rainy nights but i never sensed that apapan had fun with life he seemed perpetually intertwined with miseries of myriad hues at one point in history he was an anjal sipai a postman a neighbor once recounted seeing him dashing through market crowds ringing the postman's bell it must have been a challenging job then considering that during my stint as a postman's assistant in kombodinya makal years later deciphering addresses was still confusing punneli parambil thomas had many claimants and unraveling the intended recipient was a daunting task however 
My grandfather was spared any continued confusion by persistent stomach issues. Falling ill, he relinquished the job to his brother and resorted to odd jobs, painting houses, selling jaggery tea at local festivals, trading marotti nuts, or even climbing trees. He never earned more than what was necessary to feed his family. Despite maintaining a measured distance from his children, they orbited around him like moths drawn to a lamp on rainy nights. The day he passed away, all his children wept, concealing their grief from their siblings. I did not cry because I was still grappling with the idea of sitting next to a lifeless body the next day, an unnerving thought. I felt tense. I despised Catholic dirges. The mournful melodies made me feel like the departed. In the morning, I avoided my uncle's house where a papan's body lay. Instead, accompanied by a cousin, I took charge of distributing maranakuri, literally notice of death, in the neighborhood. It took us an hour and we returned home panting like dogs, thinking of a much needed bath. But my cousin was sent away to fetch flowers for the funeral, and as I entered the narrow lane leading to my house, I heard a faint click-clack noise emanating from the house. Everyone was supposed to be in the Taravada, the ancestral home, so I peeked in, wondering who was inside. Moanful sky. There sat my father, steeped in what seemed like agonizing melancholy. A tailor by profession, he was fumbling through a stack of white cotton cloth in a wooden box. Then he selected the best piece and began cutting and stitching it. My father always smiled when he sat at his sewing machine, but this time he was not smiling. I saw his eyes well up as he touched the cotton cloth he was stitching. "Apacha, what are you doing here?" I asked hesitantly. He looked at me and forced a smile. I'm stitching a shirt for Appapan. Let's make him wear it once the coffin is prepared. I remained silent and glanced around. The morning sky appeared mournful with a few crows and parrots perched on an electric post nearby. I'm the luckiest of his children, I heard my father say. He will be wearing the shirt I stitched on his last journey. I took my bicycle and pedaled fast towards Atarawada. The wind slicing through my nostrils and eyes cut my tears into many slices. Reaching the house, I approached a papan's body. His still, pale and peaceful form lay on a cot, touched by the morning sun. A sense of tranquility enveloped me. It seemed as if he had departed with hope. I sensed a hidden smile behind his closed eyes and his wrinkles looked serene. His lips wore the kiss of death. This is Frontline on Air. Major stories on the go. 